Guys, welcome back to another episode of Wisconsin Fisherman. My name's Kyle. This episode ain't gonna have any fishing in it. Um, it's gonna have a lot of bad news in it. Not any like bad news, super bad news, but I'm alive, my buddy's alive. Um, we put the snowmobile through a lake. There was a spot of thin ice and we weren't checking as we went. Not knowing this at the time, but we were the second snowmobile to go through the lake and it sounds like three in total went through the lake. Which we, you know, always say check as you go and we didn't. We were, we've been fishing for 30 days in this area and we've had eight to 10 inches. There's, there's trucks driving out on other lakes, which is still in my mind crazy. Um, but we put the snowmobile through, everybody's okay. It was just, like I said, me and a buddy, a uh, really good fishing friend of mine, and everybody talks about these spikes having them. Um, there, there was something different about that day. I, uh, I haven't worn my spikes in a while because I know there's been, I know there's been eight, ten inches of ice. I had the snowmobile loaded up, got to this lake. These were up in my sunglasses compartment in the truck, and I looked up. And I'm like, you know, I should probably grab those. Grabbed them, put them on, tucked them under my hood. And there they were. Got out on the snowmobile, going across the lake, doing about 45, 50 across the lake, and uh, I noticed there were some like slushy patches that look slushy. Um, so I accelerated a little bit just to, you know, water skip or whatever they say. We went over them just fine. And it felt, uh, I felt it through the skis that it felt icy like it had froze. And uh, we get to where we're going and we stop and I get off the sled, we pull up the map and we're like, hey, look at that, we're right where we wanna be at. Not right where we want to be at, but like we're on this hump that we wanted to get to. And this was a day about scouting, getting out, just um, trying to learn this new lake and whatnot. So with that being said, I got back on the snowmobile. And, and, and right before that, we're like, should we punch a hole? Maybe check the depth or check the ice out? I was like, no, we're out here. It's fine. Well, right then and there, we should have checked the ice. Um, we were probably on about two inches of ice at that time. We went a little further, about another maybe 100 yards, and we didn't have helmets on or anything because we were just going out to ice fish, you know, we weren't like snowmobiling. Um, had the, sl the a sled with gear behind us, and I started to hear the ice crack. Just It kind of sounded like when you're walking on slush, slushy, cracky ice, and um, it, uh, it just didn't sound right. And all of a sudden, the next thing I know, the back end of the snowmobile is dropping out and I jumped off the sled and when I jumped off the sled, like I jumped off and I'm like crawled and one of these, it just, it just ended up in my hand and I was spike, spike, spike. And I made it out and I looked back at my buddy and he was doing this and whoops, but he was, you know, doing this and, and he was up and out of the ice. And I looked at him, hey, are you okay? You know, he, he's, I'm okay, are you okay? Everything's, we're okay. Everything else doesn't matter. We're fine. Um, for the time being. And uh, the snowmobile is still running. I'm like, okay, looking at the ice around us, we're not sinking in. I slowly crawl back to the snowmobile, reached up, shut it off, and it's, you know, kind of sitting in the water like this. Um, snowmobile back end, and then the sled of the fishing gear this end. And, um, it was slowly starting to sink and, and we look at each other and he's like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like stuff happens. And, and, you know, we always talk about being prepared and, and whatnot. And you just, an accident's an accident. Um, could have, been, could it have been prevented? Probably, you know, if we would have popped a hole at that first spot and, and, and drilled down and been like, holy smokes, there's two inches of ice. Could we have turned around and got out? it's hard to say, we, we might've been too far gone at that point. Um, I have some pictures I can throw in here. Uh, we ended up calling 911 because we didn't know where to walk back to, what ice was safe ice. We were mind blown at that point in time, like what is going on? So we called 911, told them where we were. They said they were sending an airboat out. Um, so in the meantime, the sled itself with the, 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 the cover on it was kind of poking out of the back of the water with the snowmobile gone. The snowmobile is underwater. We're in 15 foot of water. And um, 
basically after we called 911 we're like okay we know help is on the way let's let's try to get what we can so i came around to the other side of this the hole where we had put snowmobile through because that's what side the sled was sticking out at and uh aaron's like i'll come behind you and we were, we were both laying flat crawling on the ground and he's like if you start to go in or something i'll pull your feet and you know we're, we're, we'll be okay we think so I take the cover off of the back of the sled and the first thing I grab was, I think this bucket um, full of batteries and what else? Just batteries and lights from the, from the drill ice auger. Uh, so I just grabbed that bucket and I threw it behind me. And the next thing I grabbed was an Aquaview. I grabbed the Aquaview, I throw it behind me. And I mean, I'm pro my neck and head is pretty much over open water. And it was just an unreal feeling of being able to like look down in water and in my chest was in about two inches of water from the slush and um my camera is shot my display doesn't even work i don't know if i'm recording or not it's black um so the camera is shot it's still recording but i can't see um so where i was at i'm throwing gear out i grabbed the tip up bag busted the handle off of that threw that back behind me um, rod locker. I managed to get the rod locker out behind me. There was one loose tip up. I threw that back and bonked my buddy right in the head because he was behind me and kind of chuckled for a second like, are you okay? Like, okay. He had a big red spot on his head nailed with a beaver dam. Um, and then uh, the last thing I, I think the last thing I grabbed was maybe like the, the small aqua view, the, the portable one for checking holes and whatnot. And I, I threw that back and then it just start, it all started to just go down and I'm, I'm kind of sitting there still kind of going backwards a little bit and the next thing i know this box it just comes up bloop out of nowhere and it's floating like a bobber that is all my camera gear i i i couldn't have been luckier to get my camera gear back to to make this to tell you guys um the GoPros, I started, I, I popped one out as soon as I got back to the boat. Um, I kind of, we'll, we'll pause that part, but um, I was lucky to get back what we got back. Um, we lost the auger, the hummingbird, the flasher, uh, the Vexar, you know. Um, it, it doesn't matter where I'm, I'm able to film this video. It was crazy. Um, but anyways, once we piled up our gear, we, we stayed our distance. We had the middle bucket was floating, so we managed to get that. And... All, you know about my, my phone died in the meantime and uh, we're sitting there like well we you better call 911 on your phone to give them your phone number just in case anything happens so buddy calls uh, 911 says hey this is the guy that called you know hey just it's been like 10 minutes where are you guys at and they're like oh they, they should be getting there soon so and he you know gave them the phone number and whatnot so another five minutes after that or so here come an airboat across the ice and uh, it, that was seeing the airboat come across the ice was scarier than putting the snowmobile through the ice and crawling on the ice. Reason being is once that snowmobile or the once the airboat, well, this is like a fan boat. It's got the motor and the fan in the back. Uh, once that hit the ice, the thin ice, it started to make a wake, and the wake went out about a hundred yards, and the ice was just breaking with the wake. And we thought if they were going to pull up to us that we were just going to be in the water again. And that was scarier than going down in the first place. Um, but we managed to get on the boat. Uh, the guy, they parked the boat about 100 yards away. The guy put on his wetsuit and walked out to us. So we knew the ice was walkable. Um, and he's like, yeah, just you know, grab what you can and follow my tracks back. We put a little rope around our waist. Um, I went and then he went back to get Buddy. And... Uh, we both managed to get on that boat and got out of there and we're lucky to be alive it was it was an ordeal and I, I just you know i'm here to be able to talk about it and hopefully never have it happen again but um the biggest thing is be prepared for the unexpected um i mean this thing it they still have water in them they were they were these were these were like snowballs when i got out of the water or, you know, onto the ice. Um, a thing that Buddy was saying is with, with your jackets, you have them, you know, zip pockets right here. He always keeps his phone in that top zip pocket, you know, right right up top, keep yours there. Mine was down in my bottom pocket, which luckily I got off in time. My waist did not get submerged, maybe my knees or so. Buddy's was 
he was down to his waist. He was kicking and crawling. Um, we both had on our striker bibs. He said when he went to kick, like to swim, buddy's here. Um, he said it was like he was on ground because them striker bibs floated that well. We're gonna pause and I'll be right back. Um, so anyways, I was talking about the striker, you know, the bibs. I mean, we had, we had our bibs on and usually I'll wear my, I'll unzip my bibs and I'll wear my jacket in, inside my bibs just cause it's kind of easier to move around, I think, and easier to get out your pockets on your bibs and whatnot. But, uh, for some reason yesterday or the other day, I had my jacket on the outside of everything and that probably the way you should wear it because I didn't get any water inside of me when I was crawling into the boat uh, to get, you know, into the boat or even back to the gear. <laughs> so guys, just a recap of everything. Um, you know, the sled went through, we called 911, we pulled as much gear out as we could. We stayed spread out so there wasn't pressure points on the ice. Um, the airboat came up, the waves was super, that was scarier than going down. Um, the guy walked out, we walked up to the boat one by one, got in the boat. Um, the guy said, is there any, any other gear that's out there? And I was like, well, yeah, there's quite a bit, but, um, it, it's all underwater. There was, um, this tackle box, actually, this tackle box was floating upside down, which this thing's heavy. I don't know how it was floating. Um, the guy went back and he's like, he's like, can I use your spikes? And I was like, sure. Cause the rescue guy didn't have spikes. Um, so I gave him the spikes and, uh, he went back, laid down, reached out, grabbed it, came back and we just, you know, thanked him up and down. And, um, so the, the rule, the Wisconsin DNR rule is, uh, you have 30 days to remove the machine from underwater. If you do not move, remove it in, uh, 30 days, the $450 fine every 24 hours. Both the guys that were in the airboat, the one driver and the one guy that came out to get us uh, from the rescue team, both of those guys are divers. They're gonna try to get the sled out within the next week. Um, 2,500 bucks to get the sled out. So it's gonna be total, it's not gonna run anyway. So I'll probably just sell it for a thousand bucks for parts and let her buck. Um, but we're lucky to be alive, and guys, have them. I went to the store, and I bought another set. They're $9. Nine, $9. If you, don't, if you can't afford $9, grab a screwdriver. Put two screwdrivers in your pockets or something. I've been fishing for 30 days already, and every lake around here has nine, 10 inches of ice. There's trucks on some lakes, which is pretty crazy. And then we get out to this lake. Yeah, we're good to go. Nope, not good to go. But this afternoon, I'm gonna go back out on a different lake and try to catch some fish. Um, I think I covered everything here. Guys, I'll, I'll try to reply to comments. Um, yeah. Say what you gotta say, type your comments. Uh, like I said, I'll try to respond to you. Um, lucky to be live. The gear is replaceable. We could have left it all in the sled and just watched it all go down. But um, like I said, after we called 901, it's like, let's at least maybe try to get something back. And, and we did. Was it stupid to try to get something back? Maybe, but help was already on the way and we did manage to get some items back, which, uh, like I said, items are replaceable, but we're not. Um, stay tuned for more videos, guys. Hopefully we don't have to have a video like this ever again. Um, watch the ice conditions, watch the snow on top of the ice. That, that was the biggest thing that could have going out there and seeing that there was a, even just seeing that there was a, a slush, which what looked like slush, but was hard ice. Just seeing that should have clicked in my head or his head, and we should have been like, hey, we just got six inches of snow. There shouldn't be wet snow. 
right? I mean, think about it. You have six inches of snow and you're seeing these wet like patches. Well, like I said, I went over one and it was, I could feel the ice on the skis. Like it was frozen, but it wasn't. So huh, we're still here guys. We're going to plug away. I'm, I'm not done fishing. This is just, uh, you know, I always say God's got a plan. This is part of his plan. So let's keep rocking and rolling. Let's catch some fish. And, uh, I want all you guys to be safe too. Um, being up in northern Wisconsin, thought we had some good ice, but uh, this was a very big lake we were on, and the big lake takes longer to get cold, takes longer to freeze. We paid the price, but uh, we're still alive. So we will see you next time. Don't, uh, don't forget your spikes and your float suits. It's the float suits, a, a big one too. I mean... Striker makes float suits. I think Eskimo makes a float suit. There's probably off-brand float suits. Um, they're not big. They're not bulky. They're nice bibs, nice jackets. Just having that and being able to float and trying to pull yourself out if you didn't have these. Accidents happen. I, I, I think that's about it. That's all I can say, guys. So, like I said, we're going to be uh, fishing and hunting and... We're not going to let this uh, put us back any. So thanks for watching. So hit that subscribe button if you guys aren't subscribed. Um, and we will see you next time. Yeah. Nope, I'm, I'm good. These were my, in my bibs. Okay. I had backups. You might as well keep this thing on the freaking lake. I know.